Hey, welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. Monday's tragedy in Nashville has elicited the expected response from the American left. Disarm the country. At the very least, the quote, assault rifles, as they call them, must be banned. Most of that group assumed that Audrey Hale was using a machine gun when she killed six at a Nashville elementary school. She was not. The more informed of that group assumed that Hale used an AR-15. She was not. Hale was actually using a carbine, basically a long gun that fires handgun rounds one by one. Joe Biden's proposed assault weapons ban would not have stopped Monday's massacre of six people. Regardless, the fury toward Republicans continues unabated. California Governor Gavin Newsom tweeted out coward when a CNN reporter posted a video of Kevin McCarthy refusing to answer questions about possible gun legislation. On CBS This Morning, Oprah's friend shared an opinion that we heard just about everywhere. Assault rifles have no business in, in this society. We just have to be able to get the Republicans to give us 60 votes in the Senate to save lives. Your political survival is nothing compared to the survival of our children. See this pen? It's a, a assault weapon ban pen that I got from the kids. This extremist right ideology, and it is sickening to watch them try to claim the idea of freedom. I, for me, the freedom to remain alive or have my kids remain alive kind of comes first. Yeah, Look but, at those little kids but, 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 but also, though, they say free, they talk about a freedom. They talk about a freedom that they've made up in their own twisted Correct. heads. So the people pushing for an authoritarian left-wing government to run the United States are mocking you for not wanting to relinquish your guns and Second Amendment rights, praying that you don't know a whole lot about history. The people screaming the loudest right now about guns sound like petulant children angry at Mother Nature for reigning on their birthday. You could ban guns right now and you still have 400 million in this country, including millions and millions of assault weapons, as they call them, in circulation. They have no real answers for this very obvious crisis. Instead, they dupe the rubes who vote for them into believing that gun laws would actually be effective in a country with, again, this many guns already in circulation. Then they lambast Republicans for not supporting them, and they raise money off of all of this. There's no better illustration of the left's misplaced rage than an article from their favorite outlet, NPR. AR-15-style rifles were around for more than 40 years before one was used in a mass killing at an apartment in Crandon, Wisconsin in 2007. The shooter killed six people and then took his own life. 40 years, AR-15s were easily available to Americans and nobody shot up a school. This is a mental illness crisis in this country. According to the CDC, more than half of all Americans will be diagnosed with a mental illness in their lifetime. One in 25 of us, more than 13 million, are living with a serious mental illness. 13 million people with a serious mental illness, major depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, that kind of thing. And millions of these vulnerable people are now being indoctrinated into the trans community, especially the younger of them. People who just want to know why they're so sad are now given a very dangerous answer. You're in the wrong body. Before the trans issue was radically politicized back in 2019, the NIH published a study revealing 58% of transgender people were also suffering from at least one psychiatric diagnosis. 58%. By the way, the control group in that study came in at 13% suffering from a diagnosis psychologically. Another study from 2019 published in European Psychiatry revealed 42% of people identifying as transgender met the criteria for autism. 42%. A disorder found in only 1% to 2% of human beings accounts for 42% of trans people. The numbers could not be any clearer, but state something obvious, like the fact that millions of sick American kids are being funneled into the trans community and of course, you're labeled as anti-trans because in 2023 America, it's easier to sacrifice our most vulnerable children to a cult that will leave them feeling even more isolated and marginalized than to call this out and risk offending what's been labeled as a marginalized group. 
Except the trans community is not marginalized at all. In fact, they're one of the most powerful groups in the Western world, holding enormous power over our government, our corporate America. The trans lobby is currently eviscerating multiple societal norms right before our eyes and being cheered on by the party in power as they do so. Bathrooms, sports, education, everything has been flipped upside down in just a matter of a couple years. Women are now told to expect to see penises in the gym locker room. Complain and you're a bigot. They'll revoke your membership. The trans community's hostile takeover of the gay rights lobby has made them effectively the militant wing of LGBTQ, which now has many members who no longer want to be associated with trans, which is a very underreported story in this country. Last week, the trans community again became violent. This was a scene in New Zealand, trans activists attacking a woman's rights activist. Men pelting a woman with eggs, throwing sauce and water all over her. That is a women's rights activist in New Zealand. Online, you can see a parade of young people posting very threatening pro-trans messaging, trans rights or else, with pictures of rifles. They put it on T-shirts. This little army wears them around. This weekend, a planned Trans Day of Vengeance has been scheduled at the Supreme Court with major Antifa vibes in the flyer there. This is the community attracting millions of kids with mental disorders in this country. That's the ideology. Stop trans genocide. We showed you that last night. The trans community has alleged that Audrey Hale was driven to kill six people at a school in Nashville. That if only she had been accepted as trans, even though she still didn't really buy into it herself. She would put both of her names when she would send letters to people. But if only Audrey had been accepted as trans, this would not have happened. That according to the trans lobby out there. But perhaps Audrey's trans indoctrination is what's really to blame for what happened in Nashville. A before and after photo here on your screen, Audrey 10 years ago, and Audrey before she murdered six people. Ask yourself, does the girl on the left look like a school shooter? Maria Keffler is the co-founder of Advocates Protecting Children, and she joins us now. Maria, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Um, clearly, our most vulnerable kids are being steered toward the trans community, toward this ideology. I wonder if, if you can explain exactly how this is happening. This has been, as you said, just a takeover. It's slipped into the schools. Um, schools, social media, and smartphones are the ways that this is. These are the vectors that are being used to, to pull kids in. Um, when you see the way this is celebrated, not even celebrated, but, but propagated in schools, and there are trans influencers like Dylan Mulvaney and Jeffrey Marsh on social media, yep. teaching kids that anything that's wrong with you, anything that makes you sad, anything that makes you feel bad means you're trans. And if your parents, if the people who love you don't agree with that, well, they don't really love you. You need to cut them off. And, and it's really making vulnerable people uh, sick. It's, it's creating a real catastrophe of mental health illness, as you point out with Audrey. It, 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 it's something that I, I think people don't realize, or I think a lot of people do realize, but this is everywhere right now. A, a family that I know is dealing with exactly this right now, and, and it's, it's happening. It, it happened fast. It took over quickly, and all of a sudden it's everywhere, and people don't understand it. And if you take a young person who is depressed or perhaps a young person who's living with a mental disorder or has autism, and you convince them to transition their gender you know, as some kind of a solution. How badly does that exacerbate the problems that they already have? It's terrible because the problems that they already have are no longer being addressed. Um, I've heard so many times from kids who've gotten sucked into this and, and have come out again. They said, yeah, I had autism. I had OCD. I had prior trauma. Um, I had sexual assault in my history. And as soon as I said, I wonder if I'm trans, nothing else got dealt with anymore. So you're taking vulnerable kids, vulnerable people with real problems, 
pushing those problems aside and then very literally pumping those problems full of steroids. They're putting girls on testosterone. Women do not commit mass murder. The New York Times just came out with an article today. Since 1966, there have been 172 murders in the United States that involved more than four deaths. And four of those involved women, two of which the women were accomplices to men. This is not something that women do, but when you take a mentally unwell person, ignore all of their real problems, and pump a woman full of testosterone, you're wreaking havoc on her system. You're wreaking havoc on her mind. You are destroying the person that she is. I look at the pictures of this woman, Audrey, when she was younger, she was a beautiful young woman, full of promise, full of hope. And look what's happened because, oh, everything that's bothering you is because you're trans. And if you just change sex, everything's going to be better. And we know that's a lie. We know that's untrue. That's so true. That's so very well said. And so scary. Maria Kepler, mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for coming on again and, and keeping our eyes open to what's happening in this country because it is terrifying. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much, John.